Hello, and welcome to this tips and tricks video where I'll be talking about how to use dynamic relaxation in Workbench LS Dyna to generate preload. So to start with, let's talk a little bit about what dynamic relaxation is. Dynamic relaxation is essentially a transient analysis that happens before your regular analysis in what's called pseudo time. So before time zero, you have what's called pseudo time that goes for a little while. And then when the dynamic relaxation phase is done, you start at time zero in the actual analysis. Dynamic relaxation is used to generate initial preload and it uses heavy damping to damp out vibrations that are caused from the loading that happens during dynamic relaxation. So whatever loading is generating the preload. And by default, it'll scale all the nodal velocities at every time step by the dynamic relaxation factor, which is 0.995 by default. As the dynamic relaxation portion of the analysis is running, it'll calculate the distortional kinetic energy, and that's used to determine when the dynamic relaxation phase has converged. So the distortional kinetic energy is going to be your total kinetic energy minus the kinetic energy that results from rigid body motion. So it's essentially a vibrational kinetic energy. And the convergence factor that's going to be calculated as dynamic relaxation is running is the current distortional kinetic energy divided by the maximum distortional kinetic energy that's happened at any point during the dynamic relaxation phase. So it's looking for a current distortional kinetic energy level that's significantly lower than the maximum amount of distortional kinetic energy that's happened during dynamic relaxation. So it wants to see a significant decrease in your kinetic energy over the dynamic relaxation phase. There are two ways to decide that a dynamic relaxation phase has ended. The default is when the convergence factor that we just talked about gets below some tolerance. And that's a tolerance that you'll specify under the details of dynamic relaxation. So the default is 0 0.001. So you have 0.1% current distortional kinetic energy compared to maximum distortional kinetic energy. The other option here is to use the pseudo end time. That's located right here. By default, this setting doesn't do anything. But if you switch the convergence type to termination occurs at pseudo end time, then the dynamic relaxation phase will run either until it reaches the pseudo end time or until the convergence factor becomes less than the tolerance. Once the dynamic relaxation phase is ended, all the initial velocities get applied. So during the dynamic relaxation phase, you're just establishing your preloads. Afterward, all your initial velocity comes into play. Dynamic relaxation works best when you have relatively small preload displacements and stresses that are in the elastic range. In other words, dynamic relaxation tends to work best when the preload is fairly linear. So you don't have a lot of material nonlinearities and you don't have a lot of large deformation. Maybe you have some contact nonlinearities, but overall fairly linear preload tends to work best for dynamic relaxation. There are two types of loads you can apply within the GUI during dynamic relaxation. Those are acceleration or standard earth gravity loads. Those get applied under the general preload header, and I'll show that a little later. And you can also apply bolt pretension to beam connection bolts within dynamic relaxation. It is possible to apply other types of loads during dynamic relaxation, but those are going to require a keyword snippet in order to apply them. The dynamic relaxation convergence history gets written to an ASCII file called relax that you can open with a text editor, you could import it into Excel, or you can plot it in LS prepost. I've got a sample plot of that right here. So here we've got time on the x-axis and relaxation data on the y. In green we have the max distortional kinetic energy. So this is just the maximum distortional kinetic energy over time. And eventually we hit some peak and then it just becomes level since this is the maximum that it's hit throughout the dynamic relaxation phase. The current distortional kinetic energy comes up and then the damping eventually brings that down. So this is something that you might see for a dynamic relaxation analysis. And once the ratio of your current distortional kinetic energy to the maximum distortional kinetic energy gets low enough, then dynamic relaxation will end and the regular analysis will start.
what that ratio is or what that tolerance needs to be is going to be both problem dependent and up to engineering judgment. So in some cases, that 0 0.001 may be great. In other cases, you may need a tighter tolerance. In other cases, a looser tolerance might be fine. And a lot of the way to decide, is this okay, is to look at results trackers in the regular portion of the analysis. There you can look at how much vibration is occurring, how much that's affecting quantities that you might care about, for instance, contact force between surfaces that are bolted together. And you can look at how much those quantities are varying and decide, is that an acceptable amount of variation? Is that an acceptable amount of vibration in the system? Or does it need to be closer to steady state? Dynamic relaxation is never going to get you to a perfectly steady state point, but you can get very, very close to steady state. And exactly how close, again, is going to be up to engineering judgment. All right, so let's take a look at an example here. So what I'm looking at here is an impact of this ball onto a plate. And these two plates are bolted together, and we have some standoffs in between. So you can see I have some beam connections connecting those. If I go to wireframe, that might be a little easier to see. So these gray bodies here. And I've got an initial velocity on the ball there. So what I'm going to do to set up the dynamic relaxation is right click on Workbench LS Dyna and say insert and dynamic relaxation. And then I'll right click on dynamic relaxation and to add a load in dynamic relaxation, I'm going to use either this add general load or insert bolt pretension, not insert and bolt pretension. That'll put it outside of dynamic relaxation. So I want one of these two options. So I'll go ahead and add a general load first. And this general preload, you can pick either an acceleration load or standard earth gravity. So I'll pick standard earth gravity. And then I'll also insert a bolt pretension and pick my beam connection and pick a magnitude. So I'll say 15,000 newtons. And I'm going to go ahead and duplicate this a couple times. and pick my other beam connections to set up the pretension there. All right, so that's all set up. If I look at dynamic relaxation, I've got a pseudo end time, convergence type. I'll just leave these to the defaults for now. You can also see I've set up contact force trackers. I've individually scoped contacts between these standoffs here so that I can get the contact force for each one. And I've created contact trackers for four of those. And we're going to look at how the contact force varies once the analysis gets started. If I go ahead and look at the side of this, you can see I've put a pretty big gap between the ball and the plate. And that's going to allow me to have a fair bit of time before the impact occurs where I can see how much vibration I have left over from the dynamic relaxation analysis. So I'll go ahead and click on solution information and hit solve. And what you'll see as dynamic relaxation is taking place is this output here. So you have your cycle number, the time, and this is the pseudo time since we're still in the dynamic relaxation phase. And it'll tell you the current distortional kinetic energy, the maximum distortional kinetic energy, and a convergence factor. So I can look at this as we're going down here. And what you want to see is eventually this convergence factor coming down. Now, I've run this model for a little while here. We're a little over 50,000 cycles in. And you can see the convergence factor hasn't really been coming down. And if I look at my distortional kinetic energy, it's not really decreasing that much anymore. So it seems like it's kind of hit a plateau here where it's not getting lower and it's probably not going to hit my 1e-3 e convergence factor tolerance. So what I'm going to do here is go ahead and stop the solution. And there's a couple ways we could address this. One is to switch to the pseudo end time method look at 
in my history here, about what time did it stop reducing the distortional kinetic energy and just set my pseudo end time for there and see what happens. Look at the analysis and figure out, okay, how much vibration is really going on. Another way we could go is try and change things in the model so that I can get that tolerance lower. So let's go with the pseudo end time first. So to do that, I'm gonna to go to dynamic relaxation I'm going to change the convergence type from program controlled to termination occurs at pseudo end time. And I'll make the pseudo end time one millisecond. And click on solution information and hit solve again. Now that the solve is finished, let's take a look through the solver output here. So if I scroll down a little bit, you can see here's my dynamic relaxation section. So I can see when that finishes right here. And if I scroll down a little further, you'll see the regular analysis output. And we'll go through the end there until the solve is finished. So this one took about a minute here. Now let's go ahead and take a look at these contact forces. So looking at these, at least this first one, you can see before the impact, which happens about here, I have very little noise in this one. Uh, compared to the overall force. A little more noise here. And if I look at these others, I've got you know, a little bit of noise there, a little bit of noise there, but it looks like this contact force 2 is the noisiest of them. Now this may be an acceptable amount of noise, and if I look at something like say the equivalent stress in these spacers, and I'll go ahead and animate this, You can see there's some vibration going on before the impact happens. So it's not getting rid of all this distortional kinetic energy before dynamic relaxation is over. I might decide that this is an acceptable amount of vibration and that the stress fluctuations from this are small enough that I'm willing to ignore them and say that's close enough to steady state. If not, let's try and change some things to try and address this. So one thing we might do if I go back to the mesh here, as you can see, I've got a fairly coarse mesh around these bolt holes, so I might try refining that. I also only have two elements through the thickness, so I might try refining that as well. I've got a couple edge sizings set up, which I'll unsuppress here. So I've got more divisions around these holes, and I've got three divisions through the thickness of the plate instead of two. I'll go ahead and remesh here. So a little finer mesh you can see. Another thing I might also try is inserting a section control. And I'm gonna select all bodies here, except for the sphere there. And I'm gonna pick L form minus one, which is this poor aspect ratio, fully integrated solid here, uh, the efficient formulation. So you can see minus one here. So it's a little more accurate element formulation than the default for hexahedrons here. Also a little bit more computationally expensive. So with those two changes, let's see if that helps things. I can go to dynamic relaxation and instead of terminating at the pseudo end time, I'll go back to program controlled. So we'll use this tolerance again and click on solution information and hit solve. Now that the solve is finished, let's take a quick look at the solver output here. If I scroll down a little bit, we can find the dynamic relaxation section again. So we can see it ran about 5,500 time steps there. So not too bad for that. And then if I scroll down to the bottom, you can see that the overall solve time was about a minute and 22 seconds. So about 20 seconds or so longer than our last run. If I look at the contact force, you can see that looks a lot more stable than it did in the other analysis. So we've got less noise going on there. And if I look at my equivalent stress here and animate this again, You can see it's a lot harder to pick out the vibration 
in these standoffs than it was before. So if I look really closely, you can see a small amount of variation in the stresses before the impact, but really not anything significant here. So a little closer to steady state now. Now whether that was necessary or not, again, is going to be up to engineering judgment. Something to note here is that the tolerance that you specify under dynamic relaxation right here is a relative tolerance. You're comparing the maximum amount of distortional kinetic energy during the dynamic relaxation phase to the current amount of distortional kinetic energy. And so if you have a preload that doesn't really generate very much distortional kinetic energy, even a fairly large value of this tolerance might be a fairly tight tolerance in terms of what's achievable there. So this is gonna vary from problem to problem. And it's a good idea to set up something like these contact force trackers or look at some result that you care about, whether it's the stress in the parts beforehand, whatever you're looking to get out of the analysis, and try and figure out how much variation in that result before you have your impact or explicit event of interest, how much variation is acceptable there and use that to decide whether your tolerance is appropriate. A final thing to note here is that when you set up a beam connection in a body, that beam connection doesn't inherit the initial velocity of that body. So when you have a beam connection tying parts of a body that has an initial velocity, you'll end up with some kind of shock at the beginning of the analysis when the beam connection isn't moving and the rest of the body is. So you'll get some vibrations from that that dynamic relaxation won't get rid of because those happen when you're applying the initial velocity. In another tips and tricks video, I'll be talking about how to use a keyword snippet to give those beam connections an initial velocity and get rid of that kind of vibration. I hope you found this video helpful. Thank you for tuning in.